Hello, welcome to the Thursday, June seventh, two thousand eighteen edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Augusta, Georgia. Cisco released an update to a VPN filter. Turns out that more devices than originally thought were infected by this particular malware. They added a number of Asus, Huawei, D-Link, Ubiquiti, Ubeville, and also additional MicroTik and CTE devices to the list of devices that VPN filter infected. Now, for these manufacturers, it's only very specific devices that are listed. For example, for Ubiquiti, it's their Nano Bridge and their Power Bridge uh, access points. It's not the, I think, more popular Unify access points, for example. However, for example, for Unify, a lot of their devices ship with a simple and well known default passwords that the user has to change. So they have long been a big target target of sort of these widespread scans for weak passwords. Cisco also discovered two new stage three plugins. The first one is able to intercept HTTPS and HTTP traffic and then modified to, for example, inject malicious software. Cisco pronounces this one Essler. It's spelled SSL. ER. Then a second plugin that can be used to overwrite device firmware. And talking about modems and routers, they also appear to be at the focus of the Prowly botnet. This is a botnet that's said to have infected about 40,000 devices and web server. It doesn't just go after modems and such. It also goes after Drupal, WordPress and Joomla websites with very well-known vulnerabilities. Now, this particular botnet has sort of more than one trick up its sleeve. It does do crypto coin mining, but first actually checks if the system it's infecting is suitable for crypto coin mining. It also defaces websites in order to then host other malicious code and the like. And yes, it does launch an SSH scanner that looks for additional victims. And Cisco released a number of security bulletins, two of which are marked as critical. Probably the more interesting one affects Cisco iOS XE software, and it could allow an unauthenticated remote attacker to execute arbitrary code. In this particular case, it appears that an attacker, in order to trigger the vulnerability, would have to log in or attempt to log in using an unusual username. The vulnerability is in the AAA security services that are responsible for authentication. The second vulnerability affects the Prime Collaboration Provisioning System or PCP. Now in this particular case, an unauthenticated remote attacker could access the Java Remote Method Invocation System, RMI. This particular vulnerability is due to an open port that was left behind without authentication. There are a couple of additional vulnerabilities that are being fixed in the Cisco Prime Collaboration Provisioning a SQL Injection vulnerability, for example, unauthorized password reset and unauthorized password recovery. Those vulnerabilities are labeled as high, not as critical. And then we have a critical update from F-Secure for the Windows versions of its products. It turns out that the RAR Unpacker library was vulnerable to a remote code execution vulnerability. This is a very common problem in various antivirus products. They have to include all of these decompression and unpacking algorithms, but they often suffer from fairly simple buffer overflows. And finally, we got a reminder from Xavier about a pretty useful tool, Haka. Haka does some 
something pretty simple but useful. It takes a PCAP file, looks for HTTP traffic, and then creates Apache logs, or at least Apache lookalike logs, based on HTTP requests it finds in the PCAP file. This can be quite useful if you're then trying to use, for example, other existing tools to further process these logs, for example, for network forensics. Well, this is it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.